morning, everyone. And welcome to the Link Baptist Church. We are so glad that you are here for those that are here, for those that are joining us on the radio, for those that are joining us by uh, uh, Facebook Live or social media. Thank you for joining with us today. Before we get into uh, the crux of where we're going, I'd like to make a couple of announcements for you. Uh, we're asking for donations uh, for purchasing baby needs. It is a new ministry called Babies Come First. And, uh, you know, whatever you can donate, uh, please make a donation to uh, the ladies, Miss Pam and Miss Angela, Miss Jerry, Miss Clem, uh, Miss Michelle, Miss Keisha, some women who are trying to take up. We have three brand new babies that may come, that one has already come this month. Uh, we are expecting, Lord Jesus, please, one on this Wednesday, the 25th. And we found out that another one, the, the other, the third baby may be coming sometime this month, sometime early next month. But we're taking up uh, donations for goods for them. So um, please try and uh, talk with them about purchasing baby needs or talking to them about what you can donate as far as uh, them getting the, the goods for themselves. The next thing says, our Sunday school series will start December 6th. And, and December 6th uh, is going to be our, our new series. And people, please order your books now and get them. We have, um, I guess, about 30, 40 left here, and I did order 100 more. Whether we sell them all or not is kind of, but we, they, they'll get out there. We're just asking you to invest in our Sunday school because, it is the word of God that needs to get out there. Get your family, get your friends in there. Get, get, buy, order the books. They are ready now, and we're ready to deliver them to people and uh, make sure that everything that goes out will bring uh, glory and honor to God. So, you know, when you when the, the Sunday school books, it says, realize that everything succeeds under loving the Son. And it is a series that the Lord blessed me to write. But after we get done with it, we're going to rewrite it. We're going to put our new notes in there and have a series number two because we want to go somewhere. We have, everything is goal-oriented here. We really want to have a goal where we're trying to do what the Lord God Almighty would have us to do or, or is telling us to do. So that being said, um, the, the books are $15, but if you don't have $15, it's $10. If, it's, if you don't have $10, we, you, we got $5, but we'll, we'll work with you. Seriously, I mean, really, we will work with you. It's not about the money. It's about your getting a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, so now we're going to have a presentation now. All right, we're going to have a, a presentation to our deacons. Yes, yeah, they, they are standing in the hallway. Miss Carmen Baker has an announcement. Oh, I, don't, I don't think you're on, Ms. Carmen. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and who has made the Lord his hope and confidence. On behalf of the Link Baptist Church, we would like to honor and present these tokens of appreciation to our deacons for their service and their commitment to the work of the ministry and the work toward the kingdom of God. May our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, bless each of you as he continues his work in you. Deacon Neal... Deacon Stevens, Deacon Howard, and Deacon Baker. You know, with that being said, also what we want to do now is we want to make sure that uh, in all this, we want to not, not only do we honor God with them, but um, we want to make sure that what we're doing, that we want to not, we present them with a gift, but we also want to give them a word of prayer. So, you know, guys, be encouraged to know that the, the, the work that you do, it does not go unnoticed and that we do notice you and we do see you and we're grateful for the work that you do. So um, before we go any further, if y'all hold on a second, we're about to pray. Hold, hold on a second. We're about to pray. We're about to pray. We, we want to say thank you for the work that you're doing and that you have done and uh, be encouraged to keep doing the work. Standing out on post, being security now while we can have service really blesses our soul that we can come into God's house during this time of COVID and have service and, and do this and know that we can pray and we can honor God 
and you guys out there watching our bank. This is a small token of our appreciation, but we're going to ask you right now if you would just join us in getting in God's presence together. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you in the name of Jesus. We do thank you for the deacons that you raised up, Lord, who stand on their post, just like Joshua did with Moses this morning, that he stand on his post, Lord. And, and we thank you for the work that you called them to do, Lord, that we do see them from A to Z, Lord. We see all the good things they do that goes unspoken. And, and we, we ask you to continue to bless them and keep them and draw them close to you. Lord Jesus, we uplift your name and we pray right now that you are honored and glorified them. Bless them, keep them, and draw them closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank, you Thank you, guys. Y'all have a good one. Let's give them a hand clap of praise, guys. Yeah. Listen, thank you guys for doing that with them. Guys, know also, as I said, that, that we're about to go and, and embark into a totally different and new endeavor in life. And what the Lord has us doing, that we're going to go on ahead and we're going to do it. We're, we're going to do what God would have us to do. Amen. Amen. Grab your Bibles, if you will, and turn with me to the book of Ephesians, chapter 2. The book of Ephesians. And today we're going to prayerfully get into God's word. We are a Bible teaching, Bible believing church, and we live by the, the implanted word of God. So today we're going to get into God's word. And I only got three scriptures I want to go over with you with them. Prayerfully, Lord, give me a, a decent sermon to, uh, to, to, to speak a word to you. We are in the book of Ephesians, chapter 3. Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus. Good church, good letter, good people, really obeying God's word. There was a problem with doctrine in here. We're going to pray again that the solid foundation of the Lord, chapter 2. Ephesians, chapter 2, my bad. Ephesians, chapter 2. The doctrine. Make sure you understand what you know, why you believe what you believe, and wh what God says in his word. All scripture should be like this first. It is observation. What do you see? What does God's word say? The second and most important, no, the second and next point, it is interpretation. What is God really saying in his word? What is God really saying? Not what you want him to say, but what is God saying? The last thing is application. How do you apply this thing to live a holy and a godly life? Yeah. So before we get into God's word, pray with him, please. Father, we thank you and we praise you today in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we are grateful, we're thankful for who you are and for all that you do. For, mainly for who you are, God, just for who you are. That you are Lord, you're master, you are savior, you, and you are Christ. You are the very promise of God. And Lord, we pray, invite your Holy Spirit to come in today and teach us and talk to us and guide us and lead us. And in all things, draw us close to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The, the Bible says in, in Romans chapter 13, it says that, that we are to be subject to the rulers and authorities that are here on earth. Whether you like them or not, it, it really doesn't matter what you think and what you believe. What do the powers that be say? Nobody has power and authority unless God gives it to them. The experts are telling us this, and people listen. Some folk going to do it, some folk not going to do it. They said, don't get together for Thanksgiving with people who are not directly in your home. I know everybody want to celebrate, but Thanksgiving is not a holy day. It's a man-made holiday to give thanks. But every day is Thanksgiving. Amen. Every day is Christmas. Every day you thank God for Jesus. Amen. So, I mean, listen, this year in particular, every holiday that the 4th of July uh, Labor Memorial Day, the 4th of July, Labor Day, Columbus Day. Every time there's a holiday, there's a spike in cases because people are celebrating. They are. But people, they're saying now you got COVID round two. You got pneumonia. You got the flu. They're saying just for the sake of somebody else, do not meet with other folk. Because the life you say might be somebody in your house. It might be somebody in your family because some people can be asymptomatic to not have any symptoms 
and be a carrier of this thing. It is deadly and it's killing people. Think about it like this. The United States, out of 100% of people on God's planet Earth, we make up 5%, but we got 20% of the world's COVID cases. That is, that's off the charts. Unbelievable. Because people just followed it. The scientists, the experts, they said, don't do it. They know what they're talking about. They're, they're, they're trained in this area. Just follow them. If you love somebody, a mask is not a political statement. It's me telling you I love you and you love me. Because I could have it and not know it. And I'm just, it's, it's a love statement. Today, find God's love statement in his word. The Bible, it is not a novel that you read. It's a love letter to God's people. Listen to God's love letter there and what he says. Here's what it says. I just want to read this right here. Graceful thanks living. Not just thanksgiving, but thanks living. Thank God that you're among the living on this Thursday. Have you here? No, thank God. I mean, you can celebrate. Can anybody say they can't celebrate Thanksgiving, January 15th? If that's when you want it, you can get your turkey and some cranberry then. You can. You don't have to celebrate it the fourth Thursday in January. If there's a pandemic, pan means all, everywhere, the thing is all over the world. Slow your roll this time, people of God. They're saying not get together as much as you want to get together. Just say this time we're going to make a sacrifice. It's called sacrifice. And you'll understand it, hopefully, prayerfully, a little better today when everything's said and done. Here we go. Graceful things living. A life that's full of grace, God's grace, and you have thanks in the way that you live. Graceful things living. That you are grateful that God has called you to do what he's called you to do and where, he's, where you're supposed to be. Paul writes to the church, he says it's unmerited. The Bible says grace is unmerited. Favor that you don't deserve. God giving us what we do not deserve. God gave us another day of life. Thank God for Thursday. Have Thanksgiving at your house with your family. Yeah, my wife got to work. I'll be thanks alone on Thanksgiving. My mom's 83. I would not go, and I want to eat a turkey with my mom, but I won't do it because I love my mom. Me and her celebrate Thanksgiving. Every day she here we, is Thanksgiving. Every day, Miss Ola May here, is Thanksgiving with me. It's Christmas every day. So, but I, you know, I, I'll be alone Thanksgiving. And I'm all right with that. I'd rather be alone and alive than dead with a whole lot of folk in hell. So, you know, and, and make your point. I'm not going to hell, by the way. I don't think that. Why <laughs> <laughs> you watch? <laughs> but here, here's my point. People, it's when you realize in your heart what God's grace is. God giving us what we do not deserve. Now, mercy is God not giving us what we do deserve. That's mercy. Understand today grace and mercy. And find yourself today in the Word. Unmerited favor, favor available to sinner, to the sinner for salvation, to save your soul, and to redeem, redeem those who have been saved for victorious living. That you live a life of victory. That, come, that definition comes directly out of the Bible. That's not man-made. So if you want to have a victorious life, put the brakes on uh, thanks living this Thursday. Celebrate it when, when, when you get the vaccine. Everybody in the house got the vaccine. Celebrate it then. That will really be a reason for saying Thanksgiving, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah, after everybody got the vaccine, now we can eat and talk. And I got a friend of mine, Colin, he says that, you know, Thanksgiving, I like to see him. He tells me he walk around with a deck of cards in his pocket, right? So he can play me. Because so, last time me and Ben had beat the brakes off of him. So he said he keep his deck in his back pocket because he's just ready to play some spades. I can't wait to meet him again and play some spades. That's thanks living. I, I, I can't wait to see my friend and beat him in a game of spades. Amen. Here we go. So for my grace, it nothing you did for by grace, by God's love, by God's grace, nothing you deserve, we got saved 
through faith, through what we believe. Do you believe that what God did at Calvary, when Christ finished his work at the cross, do you believe that that is what saved your soul? When, when you accepted God, at, when you accepted the Lordship of Jesus Christ at the cross, for by grace you have been saved through faith. When grace of heaven reached down, your faith it reached up to God, I believe you. I believe Jesus is your son. I believe he finished his work at Calvary. I believe he died for my sin. I believe he is master and Lord of my life, and I believe that I am going to follow him for the rest of my days. For by grace you've been saved through faith, and not of yourselves. You didn't have anything to do with it. Nothing. It is Christ, and it's Christ alone. Yo, we're not that good. It's because of what you, it's not of ourselves. You recognize it is the gift of God. You can't work your way and get it. It is not of works, lest anyone should, because people are brags, brag about what they did and how they did it. Yeah, they will. They'll, they'll brag and how they did. You know, we, we had a church full of people. We got, you think about, God gave us this building seven years ago, and we paid for it. The bank said 165000 The owner said 135000 And God paid it off for us in 10 months. The bank said 10 years. The Lord said 10 months. Then he added that field, and he added that house. He, he keeps adding on. Now, that's nothing that we did. Yeah, so if we know God can give us this property and that property and that property. We're just waiting on him to give that property. So guess what? So we can build. For by the, oh, but by the grace of God go I. God has a plan and a purpose why he gives you grace and why he wants you to do what he wants you to do. It is just by God's grace. It is a gift. We don't deserve this building. All, everything's paid for. We don't want to get in debt with any man. We don't want to know, owe any man nothing but the love. So we're not in debt. That we're, we're not stressing. We're not having fundraisers. We're not selling stuff. We just trust the tide that God's going to take care of us like he's always done it. So because if we could boast about that, then we could say what we did. And all we did was, was trust God and follow Jesus. That's about the extent of is to trust God and follow Jesus. Not a work that anybody can boast because people like to boast. Then it said this church and that church and any church that named the name of Jesus. We are his workmanship. We are work in progress. Remember that word, that's sanctification. We are his, God's workmanship. We are created in Christ, Jesus, to do good things for good works. Why is that? Because God prepared them beforehand. God already got some souls over here in Bellevue. I don't know if y'all knew, some of y'all know, but when we first decided to move, we had a, bay, a, a place down by... Um, the farmer's market. A friend of mine, Guy Everhart, wanted to sell the building. Nice building, big building. <laughs> you know, we could have paid a lot of money, got there and been all fancied up and looked like this and all dialed up. But the Lord said, I want y'all in Bellevue, where they play hardball. I said, Lord, let, let, let's go to the place where they play hardball. We're, we're the very ones that God called to be here. We're his workmanship. We don't get to do, this is a door that God, God opened that door. That, no, that was a door that was open. But this was a door that God wanted. And to prove it to us, he paid it off in 10 months. We know that 10 represents law and responsibility. That how dare the God of the universe would put us in Bellevue and give us a building and nice and everything and give us property and give us houses and pay it off in 10 months. Only person who could do that was the Lord God Almighty all by himself. Period. Give God the praise for that, baby. Listen. Remember this word that we are his workmanship. It's not your call. It's not my call. It's God's call as to what you're supposed to do. And Deborah, listen today with, with your question. Deborah gave me a question, and when I told the answer was Jonah. Y'all remember my boy Jonah, right? And she just laughed, just like she's doing now. But you know the answer is true when we've all been Jonah before. God, we need to, you need to do, you. Uh, don't do all that. 
You're his workmanship, not he's yours. For, for by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God had already prepared before we got over here, beforehand that we should walk in them. While we're here, we're not going to where we're going to build up Bellevue. Yeah, we're building it up now. We're going to build it up. We've gotten that side. We're going to when we get this city block. We're going to build it. We're going to put a family life center here. We're going to have a place where they can come and they can hear about the goodness and the kindness of Jesus. Yeah, these little boys that want to gang bang and pull out pistols. Yeah, come on. That, those are the very ones that I want, that I'm called for. Those are the very ones. Yeah. People, when we do it God's way, God placed us here for a reason. He done put us on the radio and got out of God's on Facebook. We're going to hundreds, we're going to thousands. It's happening. But we got to do God's bidding here. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. So today I'm going to tell you about thanks living. Live a life that honors and glorifies God. And I want to give you my sermon. I pray we can go home. For those who do not know, uh, my big head son right there is going to get married at the end of the day. And uh, going to join him in matrimony with Miss Leslie Bryan. Amen. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. And now you're going to hear him say that, that, but that the two have become one, that Adam and Eve shared the same rib. Yeah, that the two, he says some mystery how the two become one, but it's real, it's locked in place. So listen for God's grace when he tell you about this grace today, this grace for living from this point forward. Let's start, Miss Carmen, ready? Let's go. Remember, there's common grace, the type of grace. This thing is about grace, common grace. The sun rose upon everybody this morning. It did. For everybody who's alive, everybody got some sunshine. Yeah, everybody got some pretty decent attitude. But common grace is this. All men must admit the goodness and the kindness of God. Remember the word goodness because in Exodus 33, we t Moses talked about God's goodness. Goodness and kindness are two attributes of the Holy Spirit. It's a part of the fruit of the Spirit. Now, common grace is something that we all get. God loves everyone. That's common grace that God loves us. So there's a common grace that he gives to all people whether they acknowledge him or not. Everybody don't acknowledge God's son, Jesus. They do not. The common grace is God still smiles upon the world. He allowed the sun to shine. He allowed the rain to come. He allowed all of us to breathe his air. Matthew 5 and 45 tells us he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good. He sends rain on the just and on unjust. It's not just going to rain in your house and not rain at your enemy's house. Yeah, God, he, he, he makes it rain on all of the above. There's a common grace. This is probably going to be the big one that's going to sink most people. Because Paul says in Romans 1, Deborah, that, that people saw God's invisible attributes and they still would not praise him. They know that none of us caused the sun to, to come up this morning. Not one of us. Not a one of us bought our own oxygen this morning. Yeah, God gave it to us. So there's a common grace, the trees, the grass, how they grow, uh, the, the, the body, the organ, how this stuff happens, there's a common grace. He makes the sun rise on the good and on the, on, on the evil and on the good, sends rain on the just and on the unjust, but there's a common grace for believers and for unbelievers. But everyone must know that God... Grace does run out sometimes. You ever had a child, you tell them, boy, stop, stop. <laughs> and he'd do it again. I, I've asked you that, this, no, stop, all right? And he heard you, but he just wouldn't do right. You go to doing something, he'd do it again. He said, didn't I tell you? And that's when the hand comes into play. You tighten him up. See, he believes that. And that's how it is with common grace. People believe God when something tragic happens to them. They do. That's the sad part about it. They don't believe 
And Rick Warren wrote a book and sold millions of copies. And he started out by saying that the one thing that draws people to God, it is tragedy. It is. Don't let tragedy draw you to God. Trust the Bible that Jesus is God's son. That he did die for your sins. That he did finish his work at Calvary. Christ didn't just work. He finished the work at Calvary. I'm supposed to be holding my tablet in my hand. I ain't got used to this thing yet, y'all, but uh, I want to teach off of it. Still kind of old school, but I'm trying. You know, that's, that, that's grace. If God give me the grace to reach the younger generation by this technology and stuff like this, Lord, I'll do it, but I'll do it. Here we go. Common grace is that, that God has a commonality that we all we all can sit in the chairs. We all can listen with our ears. We all can uh, receive the goodness and the kindness of God. But how many of us want to acknowledge that it was Christ who did it for us, and it was nothing that we did because of ourselves? Common grace. Give me the next one, Carmen. I only got seven, guys. I'm saving grace. This is the one everybody want to claim. But listen, when you got saving grace, you cannot accept Christ as Savior, not as Lord. If he saves your soul, he's got to lead you in the battle. You, he can't just save your soul and you be satisfied with that. That's bad, wrong interpretation. He's Lord and Savior, and he has to save your soul, but he's also got to lead you. Saving grace, becoming brand new in Christ. That it is no longer I who live, but the Christ that lives in me. How long do we have to have all the chairs out of the sanctuary? How long, Lord? How, how long can people not come? How long do we have to socially distance? How long? Saving grace, meaning God is trying to save somebody's life first and save their soul second. Yeah. Think about this. God has spoken through his son Jesus in the Bible. How many people really open up the Bible at home and read the Bible? That's where your help comes from, from the word of God. The saving grace. That's why God sent it right home. The songwriter said, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found blind, but now I see. The original writing, he said that he wasn't a wretch, but he was a worm. Yeah. The original writing, he says a worm, that he knew he crawled on the ground, that he was about as low as you can go. Amazing grace. Ephesians 2 and 8, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. You recognize that today's lesson is about amazing grace. What's so amazing about grace? That you woke up this morning, that you are clothed, number one, and you are in your right mind. For those who are, that you can get up, you can put your own clothes on, that you've got your right mind. I mean, that's what's so amazing about grace. That I didn't get caught lusting or stealing or thinking or robbing or whatever you did yesterday that you didn't get called out on it. Now, God knows how dirty your heart is, people of God. All of us, we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. How much you hated somebody, disliked somebody. But that amazing saving grace still gave you another opportunity to say, Lord, please forgive me. Help me to get this thing right. Yeah. Thanks living. When you are grateful, say, Lord, I didn't think that thing all the way through and I'm getting the bad consequences now because I didn't think it all the way through. And God blesses in spite of the mess that you made. Anybody ever been there? When God blesses you in spite of the mess that and you know you made a mess. When I got my D.I.U. I knew that I had made a mistake. I did. I mean, I knew it. But thank God for his amazing saving grace that I'm able to still teach and preach his gospel. That's um, 30 years ago. And I can look back when God was trying to get my attention then. Thank God I didn't kill myself and I didn't kill anybody else. But how many times did I drink and drive before I got caught? Come on, somebody. Listen, we all sin and fall short of God's glory. Man, I said, well, Mac Miller, say your ABCs. And I can say A, B, and C, and I'm saying, Lord, I, I know I know these things right here. But that's why I got the DIU. 
and I couldn't even pronounce D-U-I. Come on, somebody. Saving grace. Let's say the rest like me. Yeah, be, be willing to admit what, give God the glory for your testimony in life about what he did for you. Give God the glory. I didn't save myself, but how many times I could have been drinking and driving and killed somebody else? Come on, somebody. I'd rather have this testimony than that testimony. Let's go, Miss Carmen. I'm going to follow you this time. I don't know. All right, sanctifying grace. And people write this down because it talks about a piece of the power, not the whole power and everything you want to do. But Miss Michelle, this is a part of what we was talking about earlier. Just a piece. And here's what's the deal with it. There's a power in God's grace that I don't think we tap into. And immediately, let me put the thing back now. And immediately after you're saved, immediately after you come up and confess in the world that, that Christ died for you and for your sins, it starts to work and to purify us. And during purification, when God started purifying it, it, do what it does what's known as sanctification. God is setting you apart for service. Now, I lived a very successful life before becoming a pastor. You know, I went to school, university, I worked with the best of them, did everything. But I lived a life that was not pleasing unto God. And when I got to know Jesus, no longer was it about the money anymore. It was about knowing that I had a Savior by the name of Jesus. And knowing that if I had died where I was, I had a first-class ticket to hell. And being grateful, God, that you stopped me when I didn't know that I needed to be stopped. And you saved me. And you, you, you know, it's personal. Sanctifying grace is personal. When God purifies you and he sanctifies, sanctified means he set you aside from the world and from everybody else to do something that he called you to do. It's through obedience. It's, it's through you doing what God tells you to do, obeying the word of God. Yeah, that's why Alan and Leslie get married, because they had marriage counseling. He want to be right in God's eye. She want to be right in God's eye. And that's what it's all about, doing this thing and putting God in the middle of it, because God ordained marriage before he ordained the church. Yeah, that is an importance in doing right by God, obeying God has set your wife aside. God has set your husband aside. Do the right thing in your marriage. God has locked the two together. Paul says some mystery in Ephesians 5, how the two are one. Now the two become one. And when, 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 when he talks in Mark chapter 10 about divorce, you know, let what God's put together, let no man put asunder. Asunder means they're going to saw it. How are you going to saw in half what God has already put together? When Adam, God put Adam to sleep, He's going to give her a piece of your side to be your equal. He didn't give a piece of his head to think for him or his feet to walk for him, but he gave her a piece of his side. God gave me a piece of what he wanted me to have in this thing right here about power. As a pastor, when I was a chaplain, God wanted me to go to the hospital. And you know what? Well, I did it. I was a chaplain head chaplain for 12 years at Coliseum. But you know what? what? What my pastor at the time told me was pastors don't like to go to the hospital and see, see their people on their bed of affliction. And I, I understood that, but I didn't understand it until I, when I left the chaplaincy and just became a full-time pastor that it made sense that I hate to go to the hospital and see my people in the hospital. So that's why, I, you know, because God has changed me he set more of me aside to love his people the way he want me to love them and not just do a job as a chaplain at the hospital. God gives you, he gave me a piece of chaplaincy, gave me a piece of pastor, gave me a piece of, but now he's putting his whole, all these moving pieces are coming together. You play a part in the purification through obedience, by, but ultimately you have to count on his sanctifying grace and know that Philippians 1, he being God who has begun a good work in you, he'll complete it. Until the day of Jesus Christ, the Lord has set us apart from the world, from our families, from our jobs, from our friends, to do a special purpose, work for him alone. And here's how I see it, Miss Michelle. 
to your question. I am a teacher who some folk call a preacher, right? I happen to really be a pastor who's an evangelist at heart. My heart says I want to see people saved. So I get a piece of this and a piece of that, a piece of being a preacher, a piece of being a teacher and a pastor, an evangelist. Finally, I'm, an, I'm what I really am. When I put the whole thing together, I'm an evangelist who teaches at the church that I pastor. You see the progression? Find out who God has set you aside to be. My, my passion is teaching. I don't think I really preach. Seriously, I don't. I'm a teacher. But I'm an evangelist. I want to share Jesus with as many people as I can put my hands on. So I'm an evangelist at heart, but I figured out that I'm really an evangelist who teaches at a church that I pastor. Give me the next one, please. Provisional grace. That means that God has provided for you guys. I got to get a little air in here, too. Yeah. Provision of grace, time to walk out of the dark with a resurrected heart. How many people got calling right now that says, time to get up, rise up, and get out here and start doing something for the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. It's time for us to get up, people of God. During this COVID time, the church should be the loudest, the clearest, the best voice that you can hear. Is he kicking? My grandson, he kicked. He, he's trying to come up out of there. Dude, I'll see you on Wednesday. Yeah, listen, when, 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 uh, when God provides, that's it right there, when God provides, that the boy, he hears me. I hear him too. Yeah, he said he's ready to come. I'm ready for you to come, dude. Listen, through his provision of grace, God provides for all of our needs. Today, I go from being a husband and a father to being a grandfather soon and having a daughter-in-law and having grandkids. And I don't do no step grandkids thing. Either they mine or they not. That's right. If you're going to call them, call them, claim them. Put them on your income tax and claim them. <laughs> Through his provision of grace, God provides for all our needs. Every good and every perfect gift is from above. Every one of them. And come down from the Father of lights. I have a high functioning, special needs childhood friend of mine named Bill. And you know what, guys, as being a pastor, tra you know, with, with my, j just, just traveling all around, God placed my house right next door to a childhood friend of mine. He's special. He's high functioning. And some people may want to give him another title, but he, he, he can talk. But you'll know that you, when you talk with him, you'll understand what I'm saying. But he's my friend. Yeah, he's my friend. He's my childhood friend. And, you know, when Bill and I get out in the yard, we don't talk about the election. We don't. We don't talk about laws. We don't talk about rules. You know, we talk about cutting grass and fixing the lawnmower. We talk about when we were kids, we used to play soccer together. I mean, we, we don't talk about stuff. I talk about life with him, that I, I don't have to be Pastor Ken. I can be his childhood friend that I grew up with. And God placed him right next door to my house. Now, you can't tell me that's not provision right there. That's God providing right there what I needed as a pastor. What I needed as a pastor. I needed just a good friend who don't want to talk to me about the church and the Bible and people's stuff and issues and crime. We just talk about cutting grass and putting windows and nailing down shingles. And he showed me how to do a lot of stuff that I still don't know how to do. He's I still. <laughs> you know how you put the thread on the uh, weed eater? He'll do it. His, his, his. To this day, I still can't do it. But I'll get him over there to do it, and, and he'll come do it. But, you know, and, and thank you, Jesus, for providing. That's my thing. When you get a better job or an unexpected gift, count it as grace from God. This your Thanksgiving means that we must obey the authorities and obey the Lord. It's okay to celebrate Thanksgiving by sheltering in place. It is. It's okay to celebrate Thanksgiving another time, guys. It really is. You don't have to celebrate this Thursday. This stuff is killing people. I've done two funerals, COVID. 
I don't want to do another one ever, Jesus. Never, ever do I want to do a COVID funeral again. Come on, guys. Yeah, th- th- so much of this stuff, it is preventable. It really is. I mean, we're all are suffering, but glory be to God, he, we see hope at the end of this thing. God will provide. Give me the next one, Carmen Baker. Miraculous grace. That's when I, miraculous grace, when I got my DIU, I had a sack of weed. And then, yeah, he, he, he was talking, I threw the weed on the cup. He said, whose weed is this? I don't know. He says, mine, I'm going to smoke when I get home. <laughs> he didn't catch me with the weed. He didn't. I could have got a drug charge. Come on, somebody, work with me. Yeah, and I didn't because I had some weed. But I spent 30 years clean, clear, 20 years of clean, clear, no drug, no nothing. Because, see, you can do stuff and think people don't know. They know because a lot of people have been down that road with you. But I know God provided for me by not letting them catch me with that sack of weed. I threw it right up under the state patrol car. I guess, I don't know how he saw it, but he got it. But he didn't charge me with it. Miraculous grace. When you know the Lord prevented, he proved and prov- provided for something in your life that you did not deserve. Look what was happening in the early church in Acts chapter 6, verse 8. Stephen, full of faith and power, he did great wonders and signs among the people. Through his grace, God still does miracul- miraculous things every day. He doesn't have to do this. He does it because he is full of grace. He is ha- also has relentless grace. Well, God was chasing you down. You ready to make me? I'm ready. You ready to stop? I'm stopped. I'm tired of running, Lord. And that's when God's grace catches up with you. When you say you're tired of running. And by the way, you're just running in place. You didn't get too far. You really didn't. You, you're not going to outrun the Lord. But when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, you know, God's trying to tell you, I'm ready to save you, dude. I'm ready for you to do something for me. Don't tell him no when you know that he's calling you. Amen. Miraculous grace. This grace chases down and it does not give up on us. It's easy to give up on some people. But thanks be to God, he didn't give up on me. I have lived a successful life according to the world, well educated, but I did know Jesus. And when I got to know Jesus, I turned my life completely over to him. I'd rather leave. What prophecy, man, that he gains his whole world? And when he die, he loses his soul. Yeah. Ain't worth it, baby. How much money you got, what kind of car you drive, what kind of neighborhood you live in. If you don't know Jesus, you don't really have too much. You don't have anything at all. Give me the next one, Ms. Carmen. Serving grace. This is why so many people work in the church and really want to work in the church. Because they, they recognize, and Ron, I've learned this over time. That's why I let people work. Because they realize that God has saved them, and they really want to do something about it. Yeah, they, that's why they serve. That's why they do. They wash the dishes. They prepare the food. Every believer is, is freely given serving grace when you know that you are a committed, duty-bound, blood-bought believer. But I know Jesus died for me. Proper faith equal proper works. So I know that Jesus died for me. I promise you, Lord Jesus, I'm going to do something about it. That's when you work out your own salvation with fear and with trembling. You work it out. You do it. Because you know, God, I know you died for me. I know you saved me. Everybody in this room got secret sins. They got secret faults. Everybody does. And some of you need to take to the grave with you. But some of it you need to give a testimony and tell how good God has been in your life. Unashamedly, unapologetically, tell it. Because pride is killing the church. Serving grace, I am committed, duty-bound, blood-bought believer. Every believer is freely given spiritual gifts to serve others and to bolster their faith, to make your faith quotient go higher. 1 Peter 4 and 10 tells us, as each one has received a gift, when you know God has given you a gift, when you know that God has given you a gift, 
If he gave you one gift, he'll take that one gift and make it two. He'll make the two become four. But you got to walk in the first one first. Amen. Yeah, people got, listen. Miss Michelle's talking to me about, about Pentecost holding the church, about people preaching and teaching and what they believe about doctrine. I'm a teacher. I believe in, because I think so much of the world does not understand God's word. They hear snippets and snippets of it, and they don't understand the whole counsel of God. And that's why I can't, I, I'm, I'm glad they got preachers and stuff who do stuff out here, but I, my call that God gave me is a teacher. Now, I'm, as I just said, I'm really evangelist, right? For God, just that quick. See how you forget? Listen. Every believer is freely free given spiritual gifts to, uh, to, uh, to serve others, to serve others and boast of their faith. First, first Peter 4 and 10 tells us, as each one has received a gift, minister to it to one another as a good steward of the manifold. The manifold means the many graces of God. If God has given you one gift, use it. Mine happens to be public speaking, preaching, teaching, wisdom, knowledge, truth. When, when God gives you a gift and you know it, it's not to glorify yourself. It is to bring glory to him. Because the manifold, the many graces of God, the manifold grace of God, we each receive, serve, we each receive serving grace. Proper belief that Christ has died for you should equal proper works for us to promote thanksgiving to Jesus. Thanks living leads to thanksgiving to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You thank him by working, by showing him, God, I, I hear you, I got it. I know I shouldn't be here doing what I'm doing right now. But because of your grace, I'm able to. Booker T. Washington said, if you want to lift yourself up when you're down, lift up someone else. Yeah, listen. If you want to get out of that hole that's in your mind, that's in your heart, go out and serve somebody. Go down to the homeless shelter and serve at the homeless shelter. Do it. If, if you think you got it bad, go and watch children that just want something to eat or just need a hug. Go down there and see how real it is. Serve other people in the name of Jesus. Do what God would have you to do. God, is, God causes sowing and reaping. Sow grace, you reap grace. Serving grace. When, when you go do it, God gives you more grace. If that's what you want, grace, go do something and give God's grace and watch. You, you'll never beat God giving. Watch him give you grace. All right, Ms. Carmen, let's go to the last one. It's the big one right here. Sustaining grace. Yeah, that's the meaning of grace. That's when God holds you up. The songwriter says, leaning upon the everlasting arm. This cavalry is the everlasting arm. When you've been so tired and you notice that you're leaning on the cross, that Jesus, I'm so tired in the flesh and I'm leaning upon your cross. Leaning upon the everlasting arm. That you know I'm just leaning on the cross. I'm down at the cross and I'm just leaning. There's so much room at the cross for you to get to know Jesus. Yeah, sustaining it. That's when you know God is holding you up and you can't hold yourself up. When you know that you've done all that you could and you're spinning all your wheels and everything in you is gone, but you know God has given you a second wind. Yes, That's when you know the Holy Spirit's got you. Amen. And you're leading upon the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. The songwriter says, you just holding on. Then keep on keeping on. Yeah, you just keep holding on and keep on keeping on. Finally, in those times of trial and suffering, Jesus says, is he talking about COVID, you think? Absolutely. Yeah. In times of trial and suffering, here's why you stay home. My grace is sufficient for you. You can do your thing later, but accept God's grace for living. Have a heart of thanksgiving and thanks living. My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Everybody want to get together with their family and friends. They do. And that's all right. But accept God's grace this year. You know, after two weeks after 
Thanksgiving, this, this coming week, and about the 10th of December, we'll see a rise in death and COVID cases. Because some people are going to do their own thing. The experts say it doesn't take all that right now. Do it later, but not right now. Sustaining grace. God will keep you. Hebrews 4.16 tells us, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, to the throne of God giving us what we do not deserve, that we might obtain mercy. So when you come, the first thing God's going to do, he's going to give you some mercy. That's all right, isn't it? That you came to the throne of grace, and the first thing he promised to give to you is mercy. We need mercy this week. We need mercy every day. We need so much mercy that uh, Jeremiah tells us in the Lamentations that we use up all our mercies every day, and God's got to renewed every morning. Every day God gives you a new set of mercies because you use all today's mercy today. You'll use them up. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. God sustains us. God upholds us when we can't stand anymore. And I'm telling you, being a pastor 17 years, Jesus, there is no way anybody can do this and the grace of God ain't with them. It's not possible. Listen, can't do it. You can fake some things with some people, but you can't fake that one. No, sir, you can't fake that one. God sustains us. God upholds us when we can't stand up anymore. Upholding grace is what it is. This grace keeps us even when we don't want to be kept. Is that not what happened with Moses this morning? That's what kept him. In the Sunday school lesson, that's what kept him right there. It was the grace of God. He kept saying that I have found grace in your sight. That's what kept him was God's grace. The grace keeps us even when we don't want to be kept. The old time would say, you yet holding on? And keep on keeping on. Holding on to his everlasting arms. The cross of Calvary. Where Jesus died for your sin. And for mine. Let's go, Miss Carmen. This is a phone call I got from Pam. She didn't know it was going to be up here today. That's a text, I'm sorry. She said, good morning, Pastor. May the Lord Jesus Christ continue to bless you. And make his face shine upon you. She says, I commend you on the job that you're doing in the Lord's army. You deal with so many, with some men and personalities and attitudes, but yet you carry on. Have a blessed day and never quit. That's pretty good prayer, isn't it? Yeah. And that came from my friend. She just sent it that morning. She didn't know what I'd been through. She didn't know what was going on. But the Lord gave it her, that's the grace that sustains me. When the right people are praying for me. You know, when the right people encourage you. And they mean what they say. Yeah, they mean what they say. I said, good morning. Thank you so very much. Please, please keep me in your prayers. I thank God for the blessed friendship. Thank you. She says, always. Here's my point, people, God. God will send people in your life to encourage you. To sustain you. Help you stand up. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive it. Carmen Baker, I don't know where she get this stuff from, but God bless her. Look here. She said, this, I, I, did you make this, Carmen? Preacher, teacher, this is what I, you know, out of all this stuff, you know, a crisis manager, prayer leader, a media, life coach, chaplain, counselor, musician, here's the one thing that stuck out to me more than any of them. Custodian. The keeper of the down gate, the one who's always got to clean up messes. Yeah. To be, in order to be a good leader, good teacher, humble yourself and ready, be ready to clean up some mess that's all around you. Amen. People are going to create mess, and it's going to be around you, and they're going to blame it on somebody else. It doesn't matter, but in the name of Jesus, are you doing what God told you to do? Carmen, I like that one. When I see this right here, Give me the next one, please. When you see that God's unmerited favor equals his grace. Today as we give thanks, thanks living, let's meet at the cross. Let's trust God and follow his dear darling son, Jesus. You know, it's hard to have an invitation for discipleship over the radio and over uh, 
the social media, but we'll do it. That's what God has placed us over the radio, over social media. You can text us to the number that's on the website. You can call us. You can inbox us. But if God is speaking to you about, about if you have not accepted God's son Jesus, all your, son, all your sins are going to be held against you, every one of them. When God looks at you, he should not see you, but you want him to see the blood of his son Jesus that covers you and cleanses you and purges you from all unrighteousness. Amen. We're going to invite you that if you're listening out here in the world and God is speaking to you about his amazing saving grace, about his providential grace, about his common grace, about his miraculous grace. If God is speaking to you, send us a message. We would love to share with you God's plan of salvation so that you can be saved. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God did raise him from the dead, the promise, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made to salvation. Say it. If it's in your heart and you're ready to accept Jesus, let us know. We want to go over God's plan of salvation. To know that once saved, always saved. When, you got Christ, when Christ got you in his hand, nobody or nothing can snatch you out. That's called permanent grace. Yes, sir. Perseverance of the saints. You yet holding on? Keep on keeping on. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you today in the name of Jesus. And Lord Jesus, we are what left your word, and we thank you for your darling son, Jesus. Without him, we are nothing, Lord. Thank you that you have shown us favor and grace by allowing your son to come and die for us. Lord, we do trust you and we follow your son, Jesus. Lord, we pray for the lost and for the unsaved, for those who do not know you as Lord, nor know you as Savior, that salvation might come to a soul today. Lord, save somebody's soul, touch somebody's life. Thank you, Jesus, for who you are and for all that you do. Lord Jesus, we love you so much and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord Jesus a hand clap of praise. <laughs> People, don't forget your Sunday school books. Be ready for December 6th. They are here and they're ready. I ordered 100 more. We got about 30, 40 left. But we're getting out there. We want to get the Word of God out there. Get some out of Sunday school book. But get them on Sunday school. That's where your lessons come into play. Where people get a relationship with God is through Sunday school. You ask questions. You get the lesson together. But you get a relationship with Jesus. Amen. Stand up with us, please. All right, find somebody you can point at and tell them this. We believe that this is one time ma'am in the church that you can point at somebody and tell them this. And I tell you this today. Thanks for coming to visit with us. But point at somebody. Point back at me. I need some love. There we go. There we go. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Numbers 6, 24 through 26. Amen, people of God. Y'all pray with me with Mr. Allen, Miss uh, Leslie right now before they jump the broom. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you and we praise you today in the name of Jesus. Lord, bless us all as we depart from this place and never from your presence. And Father, we do pray for this upcoming wedding in about five, ten minutes that you might bless them indeed. Lord, help them to understand everything you're telling them, that it is a one-time shot, Lord, to get it right and to do it right in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for bringing us here together today. Lord, bless us all as we leave here, but we don't ever want to leave you or your presence. Father, we love you so much and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are dismissed, people. Thank you, thank you.